in perhaps what is the biggest case of projection yet, Senator John Cornyn just said, the Democrats want to take money from you and give it to the rich. Take a look. Growing up, I remember uh, learning about the story of Robin Hood. Robin Hood stole from the rich and to give to the poor. But actually, the Democrats want to take money from hardworking, middle-income American families and give it to the rich. Now, you have not heard that very often. There's a reason we haven't heard that very often. Because it's not true. It's complete and total BS. Wow. Uh, that is... Forget the pun here. That's rich. That's real rich. Incredibly ironic. An incredibly ironic statement from a party that gives all the money to the rich. <laughs> uh, and let, let me give you some examples, right? The biggest one is the recent Trump tax cuts back in 2018. For the first time in American history, as a result, the 400 wealthiest people paid a lower tax rate than any other group. It's according to a study by economists Emmanuel Sayez and Gabriel Zuckman at the University of California, Berkeley. In 2020, the average household in the 1% received a tax cut of $50,000 that is 77 times larger than the average cut for the bottom 80% of Americans. So that tax cut lauded by all the Republicans, literally passed by a Republican administration, gave money to the rich. Come on, man. And look, here's the thing too. Tax cuts for corporations never expire. They're permanent. The ones for the middle class, though, they do expire. They, do, they have a sunset provision. Uh, and so, you know, that's that situation. Permanent tax cuts for corporations. Uh, ridiculous. And that's why it's a scam. And so incredibly laughable to see this guy talk about how Democrats are the, are the ones who want to give all the money to the rich people. Now, don't get me wrong. The both parties you love to get, give money to the rich people. Of course, uh, Republicans give everything to the rich. Democrats still give most to the rich, you know, because of their, the, the donors and that's how that works, but not everything. So now why is, why is this guy, John Cornyn, suddenly using leftist, you know, kind of progressive rhetoric as far as, oh, they want to give the money to the rich. But that's what you want to do. With the implication of, if you elect Republicans, then we're not going to give the money to the rich. Which is, again, laughable. Absolutely laughable. Um, and the reason that they do this, they use this rhetoric, is because it resonates with the American people. Everybody knows that there's something massively wrong with the income distribution in this country. Something stinks. Okay, something's rotten in Denmark. Or literally in John Cornyn's office. Um, the rich get richer, the poor get poorer. And, 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 and that's been happening for a long time. But it was really the kind of the, the pandemic that woke a lot of people up to seeing how bad it really, really is. When Jeff Bezos can make $13 billion through a global pandemic and then shoot himself into space on a penis while you owe thousands of dollars in back rent, because you lost your job during the pandemic, well, then, yeah, you're going to be mad. You're going to be asking some questions. And those are legit questions. But again, notice how this is fake populism. This is fake populism on the right. And they, what, and they, and they use it because it works. They all do this. They use, I mean, you go back to any, any election, right? Uh, Republicans, I want to save Social Security. I want to save Medicare. Uh, get your government hands off my Medicare. Those are, e even, even the uh, anniversary of Medicare and Medicaid, Elise Stefanik came up with this tweet saying, oh, we're going to protect Medicare and Medicaid against socialism. That is socialism. That's a le these are left-wing programs signed into law by LBJ. You're kidding me, right? These are socialist programs. That go and they help regular people, taking money from the rich and distributing it to everyone else. And they use this argument unironically. But here's the thing, okay? 
So their solutions, Republican solutions, of course, uh, involve cutting taxes on the rich. Again, they point out the problem and they say, oh, look at that. I can't believe you're going to give money to the rich while giving money to the rich through tax cuts. Uh, now, they'll lump in, of course, some members of the middle class, of course, to keep them happy, uh, you know, suburban voters. But then they add in things like privatization. Now, they say, well, if we privatize, well, then it's going to cost less. You're not going to have to pay as much in taxes. But the trick is you're going to end up paying more in fees to private corporations. And then not only that, but again, you've got both, party that, uh, both parties that tend to give more to the military industrial complex. Uh, there's never any discussion about cutting defense spending. Of course, that ends up in the pockets of defense contractors and private corporations and wealthy CEOs. So you understand how this works. How the Republican Party, and again, uh, a lot of the Democratic Party, both parties love to give money to the rich while both using progressive rhetoric and say, well, we don't want to give money to the rich. Uh, think about the latest defense of not canceling student loans. Well, we wouldn't want to help rich people, would we? I, I honestly don't give a damn if a rich person actually benefits from canceling student loans. Because likely they're going to end up paying more in taxes, or they should pay more in taxes anyway, and that offsets it. People don't think about that stuff. They really, really don't. Uh, and it's kind of sad to see, like, you've got to employ some critical thinking here uh, and, and understand, you know, that when you help everybody, when you make a program truly universal, for one, it makes it obviously easier to, to manage, weirdly enough, because you don't have to go through all the means testing and all that, the hurdles and deciding who goes where, you just send it out to everybody. It's actually easier to manage uh, and also ends up being cheaper uh, in many cases, for example, healthcare. Uh, and uh, because it is more streamlined, because there is less overhead, uh, because there is less, you know, no private interest involved. Uh, and it's just, it, it just ends up being better. And it makes it much more difficult to get rid of. And that's the other thing, too. You make something universal, you can't get rid of it. That's why we still have Medicare. That's why we still have Medicaid, which again, not truly universal programs yet, but they should be. They are certainly universal to everybody over 65. And that's why everybody loves them. That's why the voter base, the Republican base that's older, absolutely loves Medicare. One of the most popular programs in the entire country. Uh, and so Republicans, they got to lie about it. Of course they do. Of course they do. While, ironically, again, giving all the money to the rich, giving all the money to the donors. It is laughable to hear John Cornyn talk this way. Just absolutely laughable. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and share with your friends. You can subscribe and help out the channel by becoming a patron. It's patreon.com slash Jeff Waldorf, or you can become a channel member as well by hitting the join button below.